Good evening, everyone. Uh, before we begin tonight, um, I want to afford an opportunity to, uh, to our new Youth Faith Formation Director, uh, Jacob McCormick. Uh, as you know, uh, we welcomed a new staff member over the summer, and so in our youth programs, uh, just started to kick off this week with the Youth Faith Formation Program Monday night, and so uh, Jacob is here this evening to introduce himself, and uh, so you get to know him a little bit, and I'll also tell you about a few things that are going to be coming up in youth ministry. Hello. Hi. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. This is my daughter, Elena. Um, she's two. So, my wife is at our house painting, so I decided to bring her with me today. So, uh, like Father said, my name is Jacob. <clears throat> I'm the new uh, Director of Faith Formation and Youth Ministry here at Our Lady Help of Christians. Uh, and I just want to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself, just so you get to know me a little bit. Um, I was born and raised Catholic. Uh, I, pretty much from the time that I could, I guess it was like a week after I started receiving communion, I started serving. And ever since then, I've just been in some type of ministry within the church. So uh, I grew up in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, I wanted to be a priest most of my life, and things changed when I met my wife. Um, I met her in Steubenville, Ohio. Here at Franciscan University. Uh, we got married in 2017 and then um, moved back to North Carolina for a number of years. That's when we had Elena. Uh, and then we decided to move back up this way. Um, so we've been back in Ohio since uh, October of last year, so coming up in a year now. Um, we've been living with my in laws, which has just been the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> uh, and uh, We've been eager to get into our own place. So we just purchased a home in uh, our first home after five years of being married uh, in Lodi here. So and that's where my wife is. She's over there painting. I was there all night yesterday. I was painting like, I mean, I got there at 10 a.m. and I didn't leave there until 1.30 in the morning. So I was literally all day. <laughs> uh, so we have number two on the way. So we're really excited about that um, due in February. Uh, so that's just a little bit about myself. Uh, I want to switch gears though and talk a little bit about what we've got going on in terms of youth ministry here at Our Lady Health Christians. Uh, like Father mentioned, we just kicked off our Faith Formation program uh, <clears throat> last Monday. We're meeting every Monday night at the same location we've always met. So if you know anybody or have kids that uh, are not registered yet and you'd like for them to be registered, you're right. um, please get in contact with me about that. <clears throat> Additionally, we are going to be starting um, back up the children's liturgy at the 1030 uh, Seville Mass on Sunday mornings. Um, this is something that's kind of was kind of put on hold with the pandemic. So we're looking to get that back, especially for the families there because there are a lot of kids in that location. Um, yeah. And then uh, lastly, I'd like to just talk about uh, the youth group. We're hoping to get started here um, with the youth. I uh, can't express how important it is to have the youth in the church. Uh, so involving them in any way we can and helping them know that they're wanted here and that they, we desire them to be within the church community is a huge thing. Uh, so we're just trying to look for the best way to do that. And after a lot of discussion, Father and I decided that it was probably best to try to get the youth group started. So we're hoping to get that started in mid-October, so it's coming up. Um, if you'd like to help provide meals or set up fundraisers for them or anything like that, just get in contact with me. Uh, the hope is just to get the youth really involved with the church and try to grow the community that way as well. Um, other than that, those are probably the main things that are going on right now. In addition to that stuff, we're hoping to maybe expand some of these ministries in a little bit, you know, near future um, with, you know, hopefully engaging with like talks and seminars and master classes for not just the youth, but for everybody, um, as well as just looking for opportunities for the, the church from, you know, all the parish from all four sites to be able to come together and see each other regularly. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I have for you guys tonight. If you ever need anything, feel free to call me. Um, my number is on the bulletin. And then also please pray for me. Uh, got a lot going on right now. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, I've been praying for you guys like crazy, so um, know that you're in my prayers and you'll continue to be in my prayers. Thank you. Can you say goodbye?
Yeah. Yeah, put you on the spot. You're all quiet. It's usually <laughs> happens. So. All right. God bless you guys. Have a good night.
O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
there is also one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Could you imagine trusting a friend or a family member 
with property or money, and that family member or friend misusing or uh, being dishonest with what you had entrusted them to do with it, whether it be a safeguard, invest, or life, or otherwise. Or can you imagine being an employee or an employer in the same predicament where uh, property or uh, what was entrusted to one was misused? And after misusing or mistreating or seemingly breaking trust with somebody because of a property or money being squandered, being praised for that, or being commended. It's kind of what happens in our gospel here today, and one of the reasons why our gospel, this, the story of the parable of dishonest steward, sometimes can be troubling or problematic or, for, or challenges us to see a little bit of a deeper meaning. We have the story of the steward who is dishonest as it says that the scripture says that he was squandering the property of his master. He was caught. He's called on the carpet. And in doing so, in responding, he tells those who had owed his master, he gives them promissory notes. So if you or if you owed hundred measures of olive oil, you know, you cut that down, or wheat likewise, cut it down to much less. And there are a number of theories of how the steward could have done such a thing. One theory is that the steward, uh, one, of the way, one of the ways in which he was squandering property was that he was charging these people that owed his master much more than they really owed, and so writing these promissory notes could have been just an easy thing for him to do. But also another uh, interpretation is that this steward was just outright cheating and stealing from the master. But in any case, we can see how dishonest he was in the affairs entrusted, entrusted to him. And so as the Lord asked for us to glean from this, to understand, to know, uh, St. Augustine spoke about this in his writings in which he says that it says, why does the Lord present this parable to us? Surely he did not approve that the cheat of a servant who cheated his master, stole from him, and did not make it up from his own pocket. On top of that, Augustine goes on to say, he also did some extra pilfering, caused his master further loss in order to prepare a little nest of quiet and security for himself after he lost his job. Why did the Lord set this before us, Augustine says? It is not because that the servant cheated, but because he exercised foresight for the future. When even a cheat is praised for ingenuity, Christians who make no such provision blush. I mean this in what he added. Behold, the children of this age are more prudent than the children of light. They per perpetuate frauds in order to secure their future. And what life, after all, did the bad steward ensure himself like that? What one was he going to quit when he bowed to his master? He was ensuring himself for a life that was going to end. Would you not ensure yourself for eternal life? And that is the key. What we find in the behavior of this dishonest steward as dishonest and as bad as it was, we see that he acted prudent in that he was seeking to secure his future, knowing that his role as steward were to come to an end, and recognizing the predicament that he was in, he wanted to provide so that he would have a place and not be in a situation forced to beg or to work, but in a comfortable situation going forward. The story, in many ways, is an allegory for you and me to understand that what we are called to do in this world is to be good stewards of what the Lord has handed on to us. And in being good stewards, unlike this dishonest steward, we are to understand that everything that the Lord has entrusted to us as transitory as it is, as we know, everything, everything in this world will pass away. And uh, everything that we come to know in this world, when we pass from this world, we have to let it go and leave it behind. 
And so we are called to live with the foresight or the investment, the preparedness for eternal life. That's the prudent way in which we are called to act as stewards of God's creation and what the Lord has entrusted to us. And if we think about it, we take time to invest in many things in our world. Whether they be small things, we invest and prepare for things that will happen in our day-to-day -day life. Or sometimes we invest in much larger ways, whether it be uh, in our property, stock market, 401k, and so on. Just to name a few examples. But do we ever consider, as we invest in those types of things for our future, our future security, and providing for ourselves, do we look at it the same way in, in our day-to-day -day actions, the same way as investing and preparing for eternal life, for heaven? In other words, as we are reminded in Scripture not that long ago, to store up treasure in heaven, things that will eternally endure where moth and other things cannot decay, we are called to gravitate towards those virtues. And so it raises a question for us that everything that we do day in and day out, we see our actions, our words, our deeds, everything as investment for eternal life, our very behavior. And I think I was reminded of this also too, how a life can be all-compassing and investing and driven towards eternal life and preparing for that life eternal um, yesterday. Uh, because yesterday I had the opportunity to celebrate uh, an anniversary mass for Marianne and Terry Milkey, who uh, celebrated the 50th wedding anniversary yesterday. And as you think about the sacrament of uh, marriage and our vocation to marriage, and all the, all the vocations in the church really, um, they are an investment in a lived out way, an example of what it means to uh, invest in eternal life. Why is it that we lay down our life for the Lord, whether it be me as a priest, um, those who are going for a married life who lay down their life for each other and take up a new life together and go through the challenges, the hardships of any vocation. It's not simply because it's the right thing to do or because um, we want to do it, but also because it is we invest in eternal life, the goal of our vocation to lead us to life eternal in heaven with the Lord. And so it is that we go through all these things in our vocations because we are investing, we are prudent, we have the foresight of where they lead us to, the kingdom of God's glory. And so do we live in a daily way with that foresight and that prudent mind at play? This week we, again, are given the story of this dishonest steward. And he was yet praised, praised for being prudent, praised for having foresight into the future. And may we, as a people of faith, have that foresight towards eternal life, considering our, day, our daily actions, our words, and our vocations themselves as investments for eternal life, for the life that eternally endures with the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We renew our trust in the Lord as we now present in these prayers of intercession. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ cleanse every disciple from greed to love and serve him before all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The national and local civic leaders govern with justice and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those that serve in a catechetical ministry find their own faith deepened by the truths they share. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sister Ellen Ann Mock, sister of Janet Gottlieb, May she enjoy the blessings of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this faith community be generous with their time, talent, and treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may intercede for one another as we mention our many needs and intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those that have died in Christ, especially Joyce Mink, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, in your merciful love, we ask that you hear these prayers and grant them according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection is for the capital improvement. Number 605, your words are spirit and life. <laughs>
yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the soul of church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours. That by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for it is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those who renew with this sacrament. We may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those taking the Eucharist at home, Bob, please come forward. As you take the gift of Christ, those in need of sure of our prayers, our love, and our sin. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. God. Number 174, Roll away.